Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Boy! Today's gonna be a rematch between Raynor and Cure. These two players have had some incredible battles on my channel over the last weeks and months. This is from Home Story Cup 2019 from November, but this is gonna be an incredible match. Alright, so left side of the map of Disco Bloodbath is the green Zerg player Raynor. And on the right side of the map, it is who we like to call the Red Terran player, Cure. Alrighty then, so French. Here is Rainer. Actually, hold on, I get, I get Rainer and Clem mixed up in their nationality because I am dumb like that. But Rainer, according to the internet, I wish it would just show that on the first page. This is Falcon Googling again while he's casting. Everyone's favorite. He is Italian. Okay. So the Italian Zerg player. That's right, Clem is French. Clem is a very French name. Okay, so, again, incredible, stupidly good matches between these two players. I don't know what it is. They just bring the best out of each other. Cure is an elite Terran player. Recently won, I want to say, OSC Season 8. Won it against a huge field of incredible players. Rainer took second place at BlizzCon last December. I mean, we're looking at November, rather. I don't know when it was, but uh, time is a flat circle, y'all. And I have three kids, and my brain cells are falling out of my head. Bottom line, Rainer against Cure is guaranteed to be an incredibly, incredibly stupid match. Just from high level. I mean, I still remember one of the games I cast of theirs. I think it was on Thunderbird. We had Hellbats. We had Banelings. We had Roaches, Ravagers, Lurkers, Vipers, Liberators, Marines, Battlecruisers. I mean, everything under the sun. And it was multitasking, too. It was a, attacks in the north and the south and the east and the west and defending your main from an attack and defending your natural from an attack and attacking at the same time. Uh, these two players are just some of the best TVZ players I've ever seen, is what I'm saying here. So not to hype this up too much, but I'm expecting incredible things. Reaper out. Reaper's name is Goku, the Super Saiyan unsung savior of the universe. Goku, once again, faced a foe who would destroy the world, realizing that Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan... That is actually the full name, really. It was not powerful enough. Goku needed to go even further beyond. He yelled for six straight episodes, attempting to obtain Super Saiyan Hyper God Blue Saiyan 6. However, the universe had enough of Goku's powering up nonsense and kicked him over to the StarCraft universe instead. Goku was sent to the Reaper program for mistaking new power forms for character development. <laughs> I've never watched any Dragon Ball Z, but I know enough about Dragon Ball Z to understand that's a Dragon Ball Z thing. So he ends up getting a single Zergling kill. Congratulations. Well played. Again, getting more than that is almost impossible. Third hatch on the way from Raynor. And yes, so that does delay his ability to get... No, hang on. That was... No, that was actually timing after the Queens, right? Yeah, he's got two Queens already. So yeah, that's what it looks like here. So standard, not crazy macro style opening that we've seen from other Zerg players on the channel recently. So that's interesting to see, but... I don't know how much it matters in the long run. I mean, I've started doing the hatch. I've started doing the hatch after the pool starts. Ooh, nice job taking down that creep tumor. Which means your third base is done by this point by quite a bit. But your queens are late. And there are definitely some trade-offs here. But creep spread, trying to push down, connecting the natural to the third base is really important for queen defense. And a creep tumor connecting the main to the natural. Not as big a deal on this map. It's not that big of a gap, but... Still fairly uh, something you want to worry about at the end of the day. Third command center on the way from Cure here on Disco Bloodbath. He is feeling extraordinarily confident. Extraordinarily confident here today. Queens make it over to the third with the help of creep spread a little bit. And at this point, I mean, uh, safety spores? He has no idea what's going on, right? Yeah, he hasn't scouted anything but the fact that there's a natural base, which is good to know. A one-basing Terran is a lot scarier in the early stages than a two-basing Terran. And you want to actually make units if it's a one-basing Terran for sure. Not that... Do you ever really see that? I mean, even for aggressive Terran plays, they've got a natural. When's the last time you saw a true one-base Terran play at the pro level? Can't th I can't think of one, honestly. Oh, Reaper! Goku! Goku goes down to the three queen attacks. Was not watching where he was going, and now he is toast. But yeah, Roach Warren coming up here from Rainer. This almost feels like it's going to be some kind of a crazy Roach Ravager. I mean, not crazy Roach Ravager, two and a half base attack, because those are standard these days. But it could do some serious damage to this third base of Cure if a bunch of Roaches showed up soon. He's making seven. Look who's making Battle Cruisers, though. There's your Fusion Core. Battle Cruiser on the way. It's not a Battle Cruiser rush, because it would be there already if it was a rush build. 
He wanted to get a natural base. He wanted to get a third base. He's going to show up with a BC. Really can't expect to get a whole lot done because the queen count's going to be super high. It's already six with two more on the way. Uh, if there aren't any spores anchoring the defense, though, that could be a problem for Raynor. We'll keep an eye on that. Hellion's in production for additional harassment purposes. And yeah, it looks like Raynor's going for this road to attack. Off of effectively two and a half bases around... I've seen this out of around 45 workers. It seems to be 50. This is not an all-in. Raynor is definitely not making as many Roaches and Ravagers as he could. He just wants to harass the third base enough to force a liftoff. And make sure there's no mining that goes on from there. I mean, Raynor, a fourth base would be nice to probably at this location, if I had to guess. That's where it's going to go. Yep. Forces a liftoff. And then it immediately goes back down. And the Roaches are like, ah, that's good enough. We did some damage. I get, You know what? Did he... Yeah, he kills an Overlord. So... Raynor knows there's a battle cruiser out, and these roaches will die instantly to this BC, effectively. Instantly enough that they don't want to engage with him at all. So at this stage, what do you do to deal with a single battle cruiser? Well, I mean, honestly, you kind of stay out of his way. You get a bunch of queens. You don't really need to go for corruptors unless there are multiple battle cruisers on the way, and there is definitely another one on the way here from Cure. So, Viking, did the Viking die? Oh, that's a little sloppy from Cure. I can't believe he let that Viking die to these queens. I mean, they do have great range, but he's got to pay attention more than that. Four Hellions cruising on into the third base. Link count. Oh, it was a trap. It was a trap the whole time. Ow, 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 ow. That was not nearly enough drone kills. Six drone kills down for all of those Hellions, and map control now belongs to Raynor. Uh-uh. Not a good trade. Raynor going for his fourth base. A little bit later than I would have expected him to, to be honest. But he wanted to go for the Roach attack, and it did slow him down on the fourth base front. The problem with these roach attacks is Battlecruiser. See? If you're, if you're worried about roach attacks, I don't know, maybe make a BC. Hang out in the middle of the map and start killing stuff as it moves over. Spores are here. Wow, a lot of spores, actually. Yeah, he recognizes the Battlecruiser count is currently two with another one on the way. And he is worried about having enough anti-air. So additional spores it is. Going for an infestation pit for Neuroparasite would be a great idea. And actually going for a missile attack for the Queens. I don't, oh, he is going for Hydralisks, too. Hydras trade extremely poorly versus BCs. I'm really shocked he's not going for Corruptors here. Corruptors are the answer to battle cruisers at this stage of the game and pretty much forever. They just do bonus damage versus flying massive and they trade exceptionally well. Like stupidly well. Queens trade pretty well too against BCs if you have enough of them. It's going to be about five or six, five Queens per BC. The longer the game goes on though, the more transfuses are available, but also the more Yamatos are available too. So. Can be pretty tricky deciding exactly how many BCs you need versus how many queens and vice versa. Lurker Den coming in. Who makes lurkers when someone is going for battle cruisers? Raynor does. Raynor for sure does. Another Hellion attack coming up to the left side. The creep sees it. The Ling sees it. The Overlord sees it. It is all of the scouting for Raynor, knowing where these Hellions are and responding with some roaches respectfully. Glial Reconstitution is done, so they're pretty zippy. Muscular Augments finishing up for Hydra Speed. Pa, 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 pa. And Roach, Hydra, Lurker are going to be the play here today, which is interesting. Again, because there are battle cruisers, and none of those are really good against BCs. Again, Hydras in numbers, fine. But they don't trade super efficiently like the Corruptors do and like the Queens do. It's not what you want to do here. So I'm very confused there's not a Spire out for Raynor, but perhaps he feels, I don't know, he's into Hydras today. Maybe he's trying something out here at Home Story Cup. Creep spread is okay, not super fantastic, but again, Cure's done a pretty good job pushing it back with the Hellions and with the BCs for most of the game. Viper's on the way, hugely important in ZVT in the late game. And I mean, we're eight minutes in, it's pretty much late game now in Legacy of the Void. That's how fast these games move. So hit that like button if you're enjoying this so far. I really like the opening from Cure. It's really keeping Raider on his back foot. He's able to get up a fourth base, maybe even get a fifth here. If this Overlord poop stops, and it should eventually... Going for range upgrade for the Lurkers, getting, again, missile attack upgrades, which benefit Queens, Hydras, and Lurkers quite nicely. Uh, goodbye, Queen. A couple of Hellions die there in Revenge. Blue Flame getting started. Infernal Pre-Igniter, the coolest upgrade in the whole game, as far as names are concerned. That is another command center. Cure is expanding like a Zerg today. I am extremely impressed by this. He's expanding like crazy, not really being bothered all that much, other than that one roach attack that came up over this way. Resources lost are fairly even. Tech is fairly even. That's just going to be static defense and upgrade spending. Because, again, spores... More spores than usual here out of Raynor. He doesn't want those BCs to jump in, and he has nothing but one queen to defend. 
Which they could do. They could do it any time. I mean, they would probably wouldn't make it out alive, but they could get some damage done. And set Rainer back, and he'd rather that not happen. Thor's in production. Three command centers at a time in production right now. Three for Cure. Again, expanding like a Zerg player. He's effectively maxed out at 10 minutes. He's going to expand here. He's going to expand here. He may be going to try to expand down here. I don't know what his plans are. The creep spread is here to deny base expansion as well as it can. But again, Hellions have been cruising in. Battlecruisers have been doing stuff. Here comes a Hydra Lurker Viper army. Again, tanks not bad here, but then you abduct the tanks and the tank dies. So not as terrible. Not great, not terrible, as they would say on Chernobyl. Again, probably the best thing I watched in 2019 was Chernobyl on HBO. Uh, this is really problematic, actually. These tanks are not doing very well, thanks to the abundance of abducts. Third base has to lift. Tank count a little bit higher here. Hellbats and Thor's ready to rock. And Raynor, eh, not super interested in going for this here. I guess abducting, killing a Thor is nice. That's the thing with abduct. It's expensive, but it's effectively an insta-kill. It's a really good spell. An attempted fifth base, sixth base over here. Yep, by Raynor gets shut down by the BCs. Really paying for themselves today. Lurkers with their range are so darn good. Another tank down. Another tank down. Another tank down. The tank kill count is kind of insane right now. Five tanks down. Battlecruisers coming on in. Getting a motto. Nice abduct. On that BC. Forcing it in. But again, has a lot of armor. Hydras. Oh, one of the BCs does go down. The one that got abducted is killed. Not an instant kill, but a kill nevertheless. Hydras and Lurkers trying to find additional bases to kill. This one is fairly well defended, this third base is. So maybe over this way to the fifth. Yeah, that seems fine. This is a planetary fortress, but Lurkers outrange planetary fortresses, which is kind of insane. Again, with the upgrade, they do. But we're mecking it, man. Cure is serious about this. I mean, I know that's the case. It's been the case for a while. Ugh, Battlecruiser gets out despite the vulnerability during the transfer. The hyper jump that he does. Creep spread a little bit neglected as a new tumor is being made. Rainer trying to take another six space on the left side, replacing the one that got killed earlier by the BCs. And going Lurker Hydra here. It's a bit of an unorthodox strategy, I gotta say, but the Vipers are what makes this work. But the problem is, sometimes there are just too many tanks and Thors. You don't have enough Vipers. Well, maybe we're trying it here. Interesting engagement. Abducting the Thors in. One down, two down, three down, and the Thor count is whittled to four. Whittled it down to four here, but Cure's economy is just fantastic. 80 workers. Rainer has a bank, though, and that's a problem for Cure. Your Zerg player has a bank. He can feel free to basically sacrifice a bunch of units, like on a situation like this, and then remax and call it a day. I guess, honestly, killing this debris might be a good idea. Killing a gas against a mecking Terran, not too shabby either. Creep Shred down the left side has been much better for Rainer at to this point. And the Vipers sucking oh off the infestation pit to the point that they killed it. Ah, uh, whoops! You're not going to be able to make any more Vipers for a while. You need that infestation pit for that, Rainer. That was a bit of a mistake, I gotta say. Lurker's burrowing on in, trying to take down this planetary. Not able to get it, but 15 SEVs die. And it's almost down, and it takes the whole army responding to take care of it. So that sucks. He's down to 73 workers now. He was at a great position, not so happy about it anymore. Yeah, ducting Thor, ducting Thor. Again, the Thor and tank death count here is just kind of not. Six Thors and five tanks. Everyone that's been abducted has died. Rainer's abducts are much better than, you know, most players when they try to abduct here. At my level, anyway. Just doing really, really well. 2-2 two, two upgrades on these Hydras. 2-2 two, two on the mech. Pretty even that way. But again, the cost efficiency of this mech is really its benefit. The problem is, the Vipers... Make all that cost efficiency kind of go out the window. As Cure has lost 13,000 to 10,000 for the Zerg player. Engaging into these tanks, maybe not the greatest idea, but Blinding Cloud good too. Viper good unit, ladies and gentlemen. Make Vipers against Terran, especially if they're mecking and you'll have a much easier time of it. Meanwhile, this up north is happening. Battlecruiser trying to take down Spores, defending, which is really nice stuff. Tank count whittled down quite nicely. 3-3 three, three is done for these Hydralisks, which is insane. Cure trying to expand bottom left. No. Not going to happen. BCs. 5 kills and 18 kills on that BC with 20 HP, but he gets out of there alive. SCVs running 
two, trying to get away from the Lurkers and the Hydralisks. Command Center in the bottom left. It's not dead, but it's burning to the point where I think it's going to die sooner or rather than later. Battlecruiser is still sharking about in the top right, trying to make something happen. 17,000 resources lost for Cure and 13,000 for Arainer. Zerglings jumping on top of these tanks. They've got the armor upgrades. They can take some tank shots and be okay with it. Oh, this is such a great attack from Rainer. This third base is in a ton of trouble, but more tanks show up. And if tanks show up and you have Hydras and you don't have any Vipers, get on out of there. Oh, Battlecruiser down. The one that had 20 HP is killed very easily. Cure being very risky with it there. Seventh base on the way from Rainer. Tanks trying to go somewhere. I don't know where they're going, but they're dead now. And the Vipers are back after sucking energy off something else. I guess he replaced... Did he ever replace the infestation pit? Uh, you know what? He didn't. He doesn't have an infestation pit. These Vipers are the ones that he has. This is very strange out of Rainer. I'm not sure he recognizes his infestation pit is gone, but the Blinding Cloud and the Abducts are sick nasty right now. Parasitic Bomb, another great spell. Viper spells are all good. They're all really good. Are these... Liberators all gonna die. They're very close to dead, but not dead, which means they still do full damage. Cure is just backed into a corner here. He hasn't been able to expand for a while. Expanding up to the top right seems really foolhardy. The bottom left has creep on it, so as the instant he tries, Rainer's gonna know about it. Adrenal glands on the way from Rainer, taking a top right-hand base too. He is zerging it up like the zergs like to do. Cures just making more tanks, man. I mean, if you're going to do mech, you're going to commit to mech, and let's do this thing. Blue Flame Hellions trying to sneak around away from these Hydras. They're very fa Oh, gosh. Hydras, though, and Spines, though. Okay, well, those Hellions didn't accomplish their goals at all. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to write home about all... Of the drones, they barbecued, and it was glorious. No glorious barbecues at all. I mean, just this creep spread. Look at the mini-map. Just look at it for a minute. It's, um, it's real purple. Which means Rainer's doing a great job with creep spread at the 17-minute mark here. He's got that top right. He's got this bottom left. He's in full control of this game. And with the abducts and the blinding clouds, I'm just not sure what Cure does. I don't think there's a way for him to push... At least not quickly. I and mean, if you can push, you got to clear the creep first. Wait for it to recede, then push again. Wait for it to recede. But all the mean, all this time, Rainer is sitting on a bank. He's maxed out. He's going for spires, which I think indicates broodlords. Would be my guess here. There's not many Thors remaining. There are no Vikings to speak of. Parasitic bomb on these liberators. Boom, 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 boom. Abducting Thors. They're just not accomplishing much today. Is he abducting into blinding cloud zones? Rainer, you're sick. You're so good at this game. Ugh. Terran fans be sad at how this game is going. I, I, I understand. Even though I main Zerg, and I've main Zerg since 1998... I can understand when Zerg looks nigh unbeatable and recognize it for what it is. This is just... This strategy, which I was like, what are you doing, is brilliant. It's perfectly working out. Again, I don't know what the Roaches were for. I don't think the Roaches are doing well here, but Hydra DPS combined with the ability to abduct something into a group of Hydras is disgustingly good. I think just kind of letting Cure Mine out on these bases is not a bad strategy from Raider. No reason to try to kill any more bases. If Cure wants to sit back here and mine out and Rainer's allowed to get up a huge bank because he's on way more bases than the Terran player is and he's making these incredibly cost-efficient trades, he's fine with it. Rainer is totally pleased. A lesser player like me would totally try to get in here and kill this base. Even if it wasn't viable. Even if it meant I lost my whole army, I would still try to do it because I want to kill Terran bases. But you have to realize how many bases you are on versus how many bases they are on. And then say, all right, so this is a numbers game. I can let him mine out. I can just abduct Thors and tanks. Make him replace those with money until he's out of cash. And then I win. Incredible engagement here. Blue Flame Hellbat trying to do stuff. Blinding Cloud on everything. Uh, just the APM required to accomplish that. To move up the ramp. Blinding Cloud, Blinding Cloud, Blinding Cloud, Blinding Cloud. Abduct, abduct, abduct. 
Hydras, make sure they don't A-move to their Dez. It just requires an incredible stupid amount of APM. Infernal Pre-Igniter Hellions try to get into a base that has approximately eight drones at it, so... These might act... Oh, Hydras popped at just the wrong time. Gosh, that hurts. Doing a little bit better up here on the top, though. 12 o'clock position. Again, Hydras ruining your Hellbats day. A bit of a pusher from Cure. Okay, so he's accomplishing something. Right? He's clearing the creep. Rainer's sixth base, or seventh base is in trouble. It's going to die. Rainer can afford to sacrifice it, though. And here comes the abduct. Abduct, abduct. Liberator's down. Much easier to engage without Liberator defender mode circles involved. And just the more the, the more mobility you have here, too, as Rainer is really nice. Burrowing in. Uh, no, there's scans and there's turrets. Maybe Burrow isn't the greatest thing at this stage of the game. F in your Rainer here. Again, going for it. The blinding cloud, blinding cloud, blinding cloud, blinding cloud. Making those trades. Lurker spines, bonus versus armored. Pretty good against Thors. Not as good against Hellbats, as Hellbats are not armored. Instead, light. Which means Banelings do extra damage against them. And Cure fighting and clawing his way back here. Taking this base is a major step towards him being able to possibly win this game. Again, look at the banks. Rainer's at 6,000, 3,000. Cure's at 100 and 200. That is something of a discrepancy. Brood Lord's on the way. Greater Spire coming up. Working on plus two flyer attack. Again, Thor pretty good in the latest patch against Brood Lord because they do outrange them. And they have that single target attack they've had for a long time that does really well against Broods. So yeah, bottom left base taken by Cure. Oh, hang on. Please hold. While all your SCVs die. Hydra sniping off an orbital command, knocking down this debris just for funsies. And maybe trying to finish off that orbital command too. It is burning at the very least. Um, Orbital command does lift with 100 HP. Liberators getting the lurkers out of there for the most part, except for this one. This guy ends up with four kills, which I feel like he should have more. But he dead now, and that's not going to happen. Tanks on their own in the wide, wide world for some reason getting picked off by Hydralisks. Again, Hydras trade pretty well versus tanks, assuming the tank count isn't too high. And the Hydra count is sufficiently terrifying. The Greater Spire done. Where is that thing? There it is. Greater Spire done. Any Corruptors out? Any potential for Broodlords yet? Nope. We'll watch that production tab for Corruptors, and then we'll get the Broodlords and call it a day. Army Supply 130 to 119. Upgrades here are 3-3. Three, three. Only plus one air weapons, though, with plus two on the way. So Cure is trying to rectify that. Just this right side. This space has not been taken. Kind of surprised Rainer hasn't tried to take this. Like, Cure's army's all about the bottom left. If you expand up here, it's going to be hard for him to get up there. Blinding, cl blinding Cloud is kind of not abducting as much anymore. Taking some serious hits from these Thors, too. Tank fire on the Lurkers. All right. Cure's winning some of these engagements. That was the first major engagement I feel like Cure has won in a while in this game. And again, not really seeing the abduct. It's more blinding cloud, which I don't think is as good here. I mean, Cure is patient, right? A lesser Terran player would have tapped out 10 minutes ago and been like, this is crap. Why do I have to play against this imbalanced race? But Cure's like, you know what? We can expand here. Maybe try to expand bottom left again. Taking a base is huge, because again, this is his most recent expansion, and it's got four mineral patches, and they're shiny. Which is never good when it's super shiny like that. Means mining out. Ah, Rainer is taking the three o'clock, as I thought he should. Again, because if the army's down here, then you expand over here, and just travel time is really hard for Thors and tanks to get there in time to do anything crazy. The third base is probably going to die, but it's almost mined out. Liberator not bad against this composition. They trade well, really well against Lurkers, pretty well against Hydras, especially with tanks backing them up. But the Vipers, again, are turning the tidal here. Turning the tide? Turning the tide here. For Rainer. There's your abduct, there's your abduct, there's your abduct, there's your abduct. Everybody dies. And the third base is done. Again, there's only a thousand gas left here, which eh, that could be important later on. But losing bases and losing orbitals is not something you want to be doing. If you're Cure, Hyder is a bit of an aborted attack into this new base for Cure, which is getting muled to death. Hydras do get the base. Nidus Worm's coming up. 
in Cure's main? Ugh, that does not, does not bode well. Does not bode well for the Terran player. What is even in here? Lurkers, huh? Cool, I guess. All right, Lurker Hider burrowing on in. Army coming. Look at them coming back to deal with this. He needs these production facilities to live. If these production facilities live, he's done. And as it stands, pretty well defended. Hellbat Thor against Lurker Hydra without Viper support. Not too shabby. Dude, is Raider throwing away army here without Viper support? Kind of feel like it is. Trying to take down this planetary. The repair is real. Is it enough against this? No. Too much Hydra. Too much Lurker. The planetary is down. And that hurts Cure immensely. He barely has the resources available to replace that. that Thor does not trade well versus Hydra's. Not in that situation. These Lurkers need to get up and get out, though. Losing Lurkers just for free is not something you want to do here. That's 58 Lurkers down. 58. It's 18 Thors. And it's 19 Liberators. And it's 52 Tanks. This has been an incredible match. It really has. Tanks defending against these Nidises shut them down. Attempting to Nidus over here gets shut down too. Is Raynor playing around? He knows there's tanks here. Is he trying to force these tanks to friendly fire on this guy? Hilarious if true, honestly. But uh, no Broodlords. Raynor really shows no interest in doing that. Abduct the tank. Blinding cloud on the Thors. Yeah. MVP of this match is Abduct. And Raynor gets the win in 26 minutes and 23 seconds. That was... um. I'm not going to give that an epic tag just because <laughs> it just really felt one-sided. As everybody that tries to go mech against Zerg now, it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't. Vipers are too good. Viper tech is incredibly stupidly good. Abduct is amazing. Blinding Cloud is good. Parasitic, Parasitic Bomb is good. And that's what it was. It was just Lurker, Hydra, Viper. Non-stop until Cure tapped out. His army was too small. He lost his 21st Thor and called it a day. And base kill count is a big deal here, too. One hatchery is killed in exchange for one planetary fortress and four orbital commands and a command center. In addition, 82 SEVs died to 14 drones down. Curtis did not do enough to slow down the juggernaut. That is the Zerg here. Resources lost, 59,000 for Cure, 55,000 for Raynor. If you're going to win a TVZ, especially with mech, you need this ratio to be flipped and a lot more in your favor. And it just wasn't. The Nidises didn't really accomplish much, but... um. At the end of the day, it was just too many of these, too many engagements that Raynor won and not enough that Cure won. And yeah, previously he did go for more of a mobile strategy, right? He was going for Cyclones and Hellbats and Marines and Marauders and Medivacs and Liberators and just going traditional slow mech with the Thors and the tanks. Was just It's never going to work against Zerg until something serious has changed in this matchup. It's just not going to work in any time. I see a Terran player going mech against an elite Zerg player, which Raynor is. I just expect their toast. Fair or not. I absolutely expect that they are toast. <sighs> rough. Rough stuff for sure for you Terran fans out there. But I don't know, man. When's the next balance patch coming, I guess, is the question on everybody's mind. Just mech is not viable. 100%. We know that for sure. So, all right, that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. Haul it slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.